In this video, you're going to learn the difference between active and passive voice, why active voice is generally preferred, and some special cases in which you may still want to use passive voice. Voice is the form that a transitive verb takes, and a transitive verb, remember, is an action verb that has a direct object. Um, so it's the form that a transitive verb takes to indicate whether the subject of the verb performs or receives the action. When the subject performs the action, the verb is said to be in active voice, and when the subject receives the action, the verb is said to be in passive voice. With active voice, the subject is doing or performing the action of the verb. We're going to refer to that doer as the agent. This is going to be helpful later when we're looking at the difference between active and passive, because subject has more to do with the part of the sentence, whereas agent is really the thing performing the action of the verb. Um, there will usually be a direct object which receives the action. So here's an example. The monkey ate the banana. Monkey is the subject, ate is the verb, and banana is the direct object. Monkey is the subject, but it's also the agent. It's the thing doing the eating. And what is being eaten is the banana. So the banana is receiving the action of the verb. With passive voice, that relationship changes. In passive voice, the subject receives the action. The agent then becomes the object of the preposition by, and when that prep phrase is included, we still know who performed the action. So let's take the same sentence and just make it passive. The banana was eaten by the monkey. Banana is now the subject. Was eaten is the form of the passive voice verb. And monkey is now the object of a preposition. The monkey is still the agent. It's still the thing doing the eating. And the banana is the recipient. So what makes one of the things that makes this a less preferred form is that we actually have less strong of an action because the thing performing the action is buried at the end of the sentence. And so it's harder for readers to understand and visualize what's happening in a sentence when the agent comes at the end. It gets even trickier is that sometimes the agent is left out altogether because prepositional phrases aren't necessary to make complete sentences. So we often can leave those prep phrases out and then we have no idea who performed the action. The banana was eaten. Okay, maybe we just want to emphasize the fact that a banana got eaten and who did it doesn't matter, but sometimes it does matter. Sometimes we really want to know who did the eating of the banana, but in a passive voice sentence, we don't know. The agent has just disappeared. Sometimes this is a good thing. Mistakes were made. This is something you hear a lot of politicians say or people in leadership positions because they probably know who made the mistakes, but they don't want to say it publicly because they don't want to um, cause alarm or really harm somebody's reputation. My car has been stolen. Here, we don't probably know who actually did the stealing, but we need to communicate that it happened, so we need some kind of subject. And another example is the senator was easily reelected. In this case, we want to emphasize the senator, we want to emphasize the recipient rather than the people doing the electing. If you wanted to emphasize the people, then you could say the people um, easily re-elected the senator or the people overwhelmingly re-elected the senator, which might be what you want to say. But if you're trying to emphasize the recipient, then you would want to use passive voice. Most of the time, though, don't because it's awkward and wordy. So here's a really awkward example. A meeting was held by the members of the community to discuss the project that had been proposed by the school board. A lot of less experienced writers are under the impression that this is a great sentence because it sounds sophisticated, but it really just sounds awkward and wordy. Make it active. Community members held a meeting to discuss the school board's proposed project. It's clear. It's direct. I know exactly what's happening. And notice how much shorter it is. It's a difference between 22 and 12 words. I know that sometimes writers, especially in school, are trying to increase their word count because they might have a certain page limit, but that's not the way to do it. If your teacher tells you they want a certain word limit, it's not because they want awkward wordy sentences. It's because they want more development of detail. 
As a general rule, use the active voice unless you're purposely using passive voice for a good reason. So those two P's go together, um, purposeful passive. So unless you can articulate a specific reason as to why you're doing it, don't. Here's a really quick and straightforward practice just to kind of reinforce what you just learned. The most important thing to do is to start looking through your own writing and noticing when you're using passive voice and seeing if you rely on it too much. And if you do, start really working to actively retrain yourself to write an active voice. This is, as always, where you pause the video, record your responses to the practice, and restart to hear the answers. Number one, many runs were scored by the team to win the game. Okay, so who is doing the scoring? The team is. So we want to make the team the subject. The team scored many runs to win the game. It's a much better visual for a reader. Runs were scored by the team. Perhaps you want to emphasize runs, but more likely you want to emphasize the team. And it just helps the audience more because they can actually, you're, you're putting the team doing the scoring together and that's easier for them to process. Number two, the sandcastle was knocked over by the children. This is one of those sentences where the sandcastle was knocked over. If you left out by the children, we wouldn't know who did it. Maybe that's what we want. But if not, you should say the children knocked over the sandcastle. And three, instead of, you know, here we have the lead scientist is in the prep phrase. That's the person who did the report. So emphasize that the lead scientist wrote and submitted the report. I hope you found this helpful. Again, take this to your own writing. Um, there's more practice available on the worksheet. The Al Purdue website, O-W-L space P-U-R-D-U-E, has some really great additional resources that have to do with active and passive voice. So I suggest checking those out as well.